Hi, Denise Ramon. Hello, how are you? Hi. Good. DeniseRamon.com, amazing channel and amazing healer. And she's got our little her little pesky sidekick, my lovely boy Eric. Hi, sweetie. I love you. He says, hello, mama. He says, I want to, he says, you look beautiful today. So he Thank really you. likes the way you look. Yes. Not that he doesn't before, but he's just really complimenting you. Oh, thank you. All right. So we're probably uh, paused this video. Um, I'm playing Denise after a certain point, because we'll probably make it into two, because I don't know about y'all, but my, but a lot of people, I mean, I have very short attention span, so I'm not going to sit there and watch something for now. Mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to uh, bring in, hopefully Eric, you can help. Audrey Hale. Now, let me read a bit about her. I'm sure most of you guys know that she is a 28 year old who went by the name Aiden and identified as a male, shot and killed three nine-year-old students and three staff members at the Covenant School, a private Christian academy in Tennessee, this year on March the 27th. So all of these are from uh, kids, oh my God, uh, from the community, all these questions. So don't be sure, no messenger, i.e. us. So is Audrey Hill uh, here and ready? Eric says she's here and she's going by she. Oh, okay. He's going by she. Well, so, um, that'll make it simple instead of doing they and all that. So um, what are you getting from her, Denise, as far as energy, the way she looks? Well, I, I do pick up on anger. I still feel some anger with her. Yeah. Um, um, it's, it's almost like the anger is in a sense of frustration. Uh -huh. um, just like frustration within her own self mm -hmm. and um and you know it's i she's telling me that she's gonna um cooperate is the word she said cooperate so she's going right. to answer these questions um, well, you, the you, best don't she can. To, you don't have to answer anything that you don't feel comfortable answering and our um our deal here in channeling eric we we don't exploit or do any voyeuristic stuff this is just to help people understand the human experience and all things spiritual yeah, yeah. and eric is standing next to her like he's like um so like a support system for her okay that's sweet what a gentleman yeah. all is. right now uh here question number one these murders immediately struck me as resonating from abuse originating when you were a pupil at that school is that true or is it from some other origin? Um, she says that there was some abuse, but I also feel like there was a lot of mental illness going on with her. Okay. And what I felt earlier was I felt it just, not that I know what it feels like, but it just, I got that feeling more on the schizophrenic type okay. scale with that. Um, but she doesn't want to say they did bad things to me. Um, mm -hmm. It's like she's wanting to own her responsibility to some degree. But she says, you know, it's it was a very strict environment. And um, mm -hmm. and I, I'm asking her, were you mad, like, because of the religious standpoint from it or something? And um, she said she just had a lot of, it was a lot of anger in her towards everything. A lot of anger. Okay, so it's just everything. a basic mental illness kind of anger. Yeah, yeah, a lot of anger she's showing me. Now, um, Denise picked up frustration. What's that frustration coming from? Eric is telling me, Eric is speaking, Eric is telling me it's coming from, um, you know, with her coming out as being trans, Eric has me the sense of feeling like she wasn't like a true transgender person. Oh. And I feel like this was attributed to some to the mental illness. And when I say that, Eric wants to make clear transgenders are not mentally ill. Oh, but man. in this case, the mental illness triggered that part. Nice. And it was more like to, um, I, I, he, she's telling me, 
but on her, but she believed she was trans, but she agrees with Eric that it was triggered by mental illness. Not her being trans was triggered by, but her mental illness oh, triggered, triggered the, her. Her, her, um, identifying as transgender. Yeah, yes, yes. Was there a split personality with multiple personality? You call it, um, uh, dissociative personality disorder now, I think. Was there something like that going on to explain? Well, I got the female side and I got the male side. Anything she like says that? no. She said no. Okay. Uh, what was your childhood like? What, what were your, I mean, was it a harsh upbringing or a loving upbringing? Something in between? She says something in between. You know, I, she says there were rules, strict rules and yeah. things that you had to go by. And um, it was pretty strict. Um, I, I don't feel like she had a voice from what she's, because she's showing me her, um, her mouth is shut. Um, she didn't have a voice, so. Um, but Both parents, or was one kind of the dominant parent? She doesn't want to really point the finger at yeah, one. She, She's I just agree. like a blanket okay. statement Sorry. about yeah. Uh, rumors are swirling around that there was a man at the school a few years ago involved in child molestation. First of all, is that true, Eric? You might be able to answer that question. Was yeah. there? A child molester at that school a few years back. Eric said yes, there was. Wow, were you molested? And like, did that as? And then that was a desire to exact revenge. She's showing me that there was there was some inappropriate behavior there, inappropriate behavior by the but same she, man or somebody else. She's not really saying, but she's also doing this, like hush up, like it was hushed up, like it wasn't talked oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that had any uh, rationale for uh, any reason for your decision to do what you did? Um, she said, she says, yes, that was part of it, but I, I just... The way she's showing me, she had so much frustration in her, which was anger, but it was frustration. The anger and the frustration with it was in herself. And she um, felt like she shows me squeezed. Yeah. And and she decided that that would be a way to end it is just go and just stop everything. Yeah. And, just, and I guess when she says stop everything, it's like this would stop them from having the school, this would stop the teachings and, and everything that they're doing there. Because she says it's strict there. It's strict there. Okay. Overly strict? She or says yes. Thing. Okay. She right. says yes. Okay. Um, was it contracted for all immediate victims prior to this recent incarnation or was it free will? Well, Eric says, you know, it's both free will and contracted. You know, he says all of them were willing participants to participate in this drama scene. All right. What was the lesson? What was the lesson to be learned by the collective and even the individual victims and perpetrators? Well, he said there's there's many lessons to be to to um, to be learned from this. Um, Eric says there were warnings or something to the effect that this probably was going to happen. Um, but um, I feel like somebody was trying to get them to tell them not that something like this could happen, but nobody was paying attention. And I don't know if it's that they reported it to the police or reported it to family or someone, but they there was a reporting on this, um, Eric is showing me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, um, Eric says, one of the things is, you know, there's so much information on social media that nobody's paying attention to. Yeah. And I feel like the way, the way he says it, it's like maybe she posted something on social media or something. Um, also, too, I, I also feel like it was, um, um, she, she also wanted to be noticed and she got noticed. I, I feel like um, at home, not that I'm saying her parents are bad or wrong or indifferent, but I feel like um, she was invisible. Invisible, yeah. She felt invisible. Um, 
she also said she um, got picked on some in school and, you know, and, and out of school. And so. About what? what just being, what just being different. On? Just I, being my, my curly hair was a target for, I was curly Joe the Eskimo. Oh my Lord. It was awful. Um, she says just for, she says, cause she was different. Um, okay. You know, she was just different, but. You know, the, the lessons in this, um, Eric says, there, there, you can't just say that there's one, but one of the things Eric says is this definitely shows this isn't going away. No. And, and so, up. exactly. And, um, oh, I'm sorry. But Eric says, you know, this is, it grabs people's heart. Yeah. But then it fades away from the people it didn't affect. You know, it's yeah. just so, it seems like America, the U.S. has so much more in the way of school shootings. And I, I think that we shouldn't have assault weapons, weapons and all that stuff. But, you know, I do believe in the Second Amendment right. And, of course, it's not the gun that kills, it's the person that kills. And Correct. There's all sorts of things we, we should do. But, it, it, well, we'll get into that whole thing. That's the whole yeah. political thing. All right, why, Audrey, this school? In the videos, you look you look into different rooms. Then you willingly chose that certain classroom. And they were nine years old. Why did you pass some and go to the others and, and eventually pick the nine-year-old for the class? She's telling me because it was easy access. Okay. In the access, you opened lots of doors, you know, at least one door. Because she's showing me she had no intentions of dying, she was just going to go in and do it. And she shows me like she's going to walk away, but I don't know how she expected to do that. But she's showing me, um, that room had easy access to exit, but I also feel mm -hmm. like the age bracket of the kids had something to do with her. Um, there was something going on with her around in that grade level that she, that interesting, that really bothered her. And what was that? Um, she's showing me this is when a lot of her troubles began at that age. Was there one trigger, one horrible event that happened? Like, a bully said something awful when you were nine years old, anything that made nine the nine-year-old age for you horrible and triggering. She shows me abuse. And I also feel like that is when um, there was depression within her. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of feeling different. And I also feel that this is when her, when some mental illness started to show some, uh, some signs. Okay. But she says, but we're definitely ignored. Okay. All right. Was your intention to die via death by cop? And if so, why did you think it was necessary to take innocent children and adults first? But I guess you weren't intending to die by cop, by a suicide by cop, right? She said she wasn't, she didn't think about her own death, um, <laughs> um, which I find kind of odd. I mean, I, I don't know what I would do, but she's, um, she didn't plan the end result. For her is what she said. Okay. She says, but the end result was the best result for everybody. Yeah. Mm. Talk to the mom, the parents of those kids. Okay. So why? What about killing the children and the adults? Did you think would make things better for you, or the world, or or whatever? She says, when you're doing something like that, you're not thinking. You're, she's showing me it's like you're in a total blackout rage, anger moment. She says, because she said, you, you can't think clear. She said, um, but in her thoughts, she's saying she really thought she was helping. In what way, though? I mean, because you could like, you know, punch a, uh, you know, your fist through a wall or beat your pillow up or take boxing but you know but why this because she said she knew she would get 
recognition? No, it is. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. How long were you planning this, Audrey? She tells me for over a year she was planning okay. a big, a big, massive okay. destruction type thing, you know, like what she did. She had been thinking about it. And she said, you know, she gets, she got the ideas from other school shootings. Okay. Mm. So that's what it is in part in America's copycat stuff, maybe. Uh, how were you able to buy all those guns legally? And did you intentionally buy them to kill people at the school? She said, yes, she intentionally bought them to kill people. She said, yes. Okay. And she said how she got away with buying the guns is nobody pays attention. If you go in there real calm and acting like, you know, this is your first time buying a gun and, you know, you have all, she says, you nobody questions you. Yeah. Nobody, she said, there should be a database that says when a last gun was bought. Yeah. Mm. So, well, you know, we have people who are selling guns that want to make money, unfortunately, so yeah. they don't care. Um, and so something like this happens. So did you buy them with the thought of these are going to kill people? Yes. Okay. Said yes, yes. So I always think that um, that this should be psychological testing for anybody who wants to carry any kind of deadly weapon. And I think there also should be cognitive testing and psychological testing for pol police who also carry guns and uh, you can use deadly force. Anybody who does that. And also... For politicians, you know, they 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 rule the world. So I think they should be filtered, screened, and that's a really good way to bring people like you, Audrey, to treatment, so that you don't have to be so horribly alone and and tortured by your anger. So what do you think about that, you and Eric, about? Some sort of screening. Of course, it's difficult because whoever screens you, I mean, there has to be a standardized test with no, but but then the psychiatrist, psychologist, you know, their reputation and whatever is on the line. So it would have to be like, okay, if you make above this number, then fine. If you make below, no. What do you do? Well, Eric says, you know, that works to a degree, but then it doesn't. He said, because, um, there's some people who are very intelligent who have mental illness so they know how to fake it until they get through a certain part and um he said so that helps but it's also too he says there's some guns that should never even be sold to the general public yeah and that in itself should should stop and eric says also to to get ammunition for these guns yeah he says there should be some kind of and he says and we have the technology something about when you scan it it can go into a database of how much ammunition is being bought yeah. and you're going to know is it being bought during de deer season turkey season or whatever season y'all have you know for hunting and it would help with that um, he says, of course, there's always going to be people that slip through that um, yeah. because somebody it's like buying alcohol, you know, Yeah. even though you're not 21 here in the United States, you can find someone to do it for you. He says, but it would help in that area. It would help cut down, he says. Yeah, and limit the ammunition. Yes. 200 rounds of whatever. Ugh, I know. All right. Uh Okay, were you led by anyone to do this? Like, were you mind controlled? In a, in that case, what is their real agenda? If if that's true, so did anybody else mind control you to do it, or did anybody, or did you talk to anybody beforehand even about your plans? No, no, not really saying it out loud. This is what I'm going to do because then attention would have been brought to it yeah but she does tell me though that there were subtle hints dropped okay there were subtle hints and i, I asked her is it because you were crying out for help 
Oh yeah. And um, you know, she says, and on some level, yes. On some level, yes. Yeah. But I, I also feel like she was invisible, you know, to a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. And and this, um, but. Eric says, remember though that there was there was mental illness involved in this. And and I find it odd that she doesn't um identify herself as he or they. And and I was wondering, is it because you're on the other side and you're both, you know, and yeah. it doesn't really matter? And um I just feel like that part of her that did the the unthinkable, she's trying to um reconcile with that like she still hasn't um eric says she's not over here living the good life right now you a know a lot of healing needs to be done a lot of healing so it's like she's separating herself from that part because that was the part um that she has a lot of grief over yeah well i mean there are there are mental illnesses and the dsm whatever number of shit now uh that portray a lot of uh anger like explosive per uh, personality mm -hmm. disorder and uh, um oppositional defiant disorder conduct disorders all sorts so i'm sure you probably had one of those were there any karmic bonds connecting you to your victims she laughs kind of and she goes there is now you know because mm -hmm. there is now for her have you Definitely. met them on the other side? And how did that go? Or, or are you like going like, you know, that it is here. You know, Eric says it is something like that, you know, because it's not the kind of shame that we have here, but there yeah. is that feeling, that sense, because you can feel that. Um, and it's not like they keep them separated because there'll be a fight or anything, but it's just best for everyone's healing i guess would be a better way is to to not be there because i do eric says audrey's gonna have to address each person yeah. that she took their life from and have to work through that mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen in five minutes or ten minutes it, there's a there's a a time frame i get no we're well, not a time frame but there's a process that takes yeah. place on, on doing that and then yeah. she also has to somehow eric is telling me somehow reach or do some reach the people who, the victims family and stuff yeah. somehow she has to work out that karmic debt too mm. with them on another level yeah wow um so there has to be healing on both sides for yes. and victim all right what was the exchange between you and headmaster dr katherine Kuntz when you encountered one another i don't know uh, one of the ones that died or oh and then it's repeated what was the exchange between you and headmaster okay so the same question so um wow done three times oh no two times so What was the exchange between them? Yeah, well, hang on. Let me let me look at one thing uh, first. And while I'm looking it up, Audrey, were you on medications like antidepressants? It seems to be a common denominator in mass, mass, mass shooters. I didn't know that, actually. She so, shows me she was on a lot of medication. And when she says that, I feel like she took more than the correct dose that day. Oh gosh. Did you take antidepressants, antipsychotics, all of the above? I she's showing me when you said um psychotic drugs, I, I feel like that it's that. It wasn't just I don't really get antidepressants from her. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I don't uh, yeah. I mean I'm sure that was in that medicine, so, but it was the way she shows me it wasn't labeled. And she was also on um I it's like I don't know if she started her transition through, you know, taking testosterone or that. I, I want to say she was just mm -hmm. the feeling she gives me. 
because that can create some anger and rage, et cetera. Roy rage, basically. Well, Eric says, yes, it can, but he says, in some, but, yeah. but there's was already an imbalance with the chemicals within her that um, caused that. So it doesn't mean people who are, um, you know, in the process of transitioning that they're going to end up having that happen oh, to them as well. Not. Because usually people who are in the process of transitioning, a good portion of them, he says, are usually in some form of therapy or coaching or something like that. They're not yeah. just doing the pills and sitting at home. There, okay. There's some communication going on with somebody well, to help them. Were you under medical supervision with the with your at least your desire you're talking about transitioning even if maybe you started the process maybe not he said no okay and he said now he goes to he okay all right so Catherine Koontz headmaster uh, what was the exchange when you encountered her now I don't know if it's when she when they met in heaven or in the school so let's start out in the school Catherine, the headmaster was there. You were looking each other in the eyes. What what happened? What was the exchange? She tells me that it really, there wasn't, you know, there was a lot of hysteria going on. Um, he, she says that the other person, I don't think, Coons. Coons really is like in a state of shock and thought, may, you know, I, I get like thought maybe it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, because I feel like um, Coons was trying to talk, talk, talk her out of it to some degree, you know. Um, but Eric says when you're in that moment, hysteria is going up. But I also feel like Coons was trying to talk her out of it. Yeah. yeah. Was Coons hysterical or was he trying to be calm? Eric says she was trying to be calm. What about you, calm. Audrey? How did, what did you say to her when she was trying to? To shut calm? up. To shut okay. up. All right. Now, um, have you met her in heaven? Or is that the same thing? We've got to wait till everybody here. Eric says it's kind of the same thing, but it's he says, but you know, everyone's coming over. You know that you know all the people are coming over because he says it's like you it's it's you just know when people are coming over and he goes in something like this you it's a, like like a feeling you just know everybody yeah. is coming over yeah okay did you think by doing this horrific act it had to be done to bring more attention to young boys and girls in the transgender community that are bullied and or murdered why do people have to behave yourself? Ugh. Ah, human experience, contrast, sorry. But yeah, what do you think? She said no. She Pardon said it? no. She said no. It was like a personal self-absorbed, I'm pissed and I want to people to notice me. It was more like that, right? She says yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe on a larger spiritual no. Still no. Um Eric says he really doesn't want to put that out there because he doesn't want oh okay that's that someone to say this is a result of somebody not being accepted for being trans so they went right. on a rampage and eric says this is it really it's, true, so, it's yeah. two different things yeah all right good what triggered mind brain slash brain to do such a horrible trick uh, were there well we already kind of answered that but were there negative entities attached to and affecting you at all um, that's the people they feed off of those with mental illness of course yes eric says you know when you're down in the ditch you can't see anything up above you so then you just start focusing on what's in front of you instead of looking up and seeing light is the analogy eric has given me so you don't reach out for anything for anybody help. So you do start, it starts festering, Eric says, your thoughts and, and stuff. And then with his thoughts, they just start expanding in a negative process. 
and then he yeah, but the know, negative entities from other dimensions. You know how they attack oh, yeah. the alcoholics and all that that we get rid of with the scalar work. Was there any any of that? Like shadow people, etc. Eric says, well, he says, I don't feel like she had something attached to her, but she definitely had some heavy influences around her to keep her from looking up. And so there are negative energies can be in your energy that yeah. can also be attached. So she had maybe some in her around. Energy. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, around, I would say, because I don't, Eric doesn't show me they're attached to her. Yeah, okay. But, but it, yeah. All right, let's do a couple more and then we'll, we'll stop the video and we'll restart it for number two. Okay. And I hope, Audrey, that you, uh, that you agree to stay on, but it will be up to you. Could any sort of intervention have uh, put you on another life path, Audrey, where you didn't kill anyone? Could anything have been done? She said, of course, there could have been other mm -hmm. options. You know, um, she's, and when she's talking, she's like, mm, this real monotone sound yeah. feeling. And just, it's not like she's, oh, this is what I did. Um, she said, yes, you know, um, she said, just to be heard, just to be, yeah. you know, to talk to. And I, I just don't feel like she was given enough attention. And not that her parents weren't, um, her parents did the best they could. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like she was left on her own devices. To be raised by wolves. Well, I mean, there are people who feel like they're invisible, but people are paying attention. And there are people who are truly invisible because nobody's paying attention to them. Which category do you fit in? Well, she says both, but she could do a lot of things at home that her parents didn't know about that she was doing. Oh, okay. And I feel well, like her mother... Each other. Oh. I know, and I feel like her mother was, you know, very concerned, Yeah. but didn't know what to do, so didn't do anything. Yeah. Straight didn't know how to worse. reach out didn't yeah know. didn't know how to reach out yeah and she said she had a very bad temper at home so they could have been scared of her temper oh wow was your mom or your dad afraid of you sometimes i get from his, her her mom that um her mom was a, a wow. little okay last one for this part what was your brain saying to you as you gunned down three beautiful angels and like, how are you unpacking that wherever you are? What do you think as you were actually shooting these these little kids? Nothing, maybe? No? Well, that's what she says, you know, you're just, it's like you're um, in a video game. You you just do it until the end. You don't, you don't feel no. nothing, she said, because if you felt something, like oh that's horrible you wouldn't be doing it but you she said once you get to that point it, it's like you're in a blackout of rage well how do the little kids who were killed how do they react at first before it died i mean anything notable at all she's telling me that she didn't really pay attention to their Okay. or anything yeah all yeah. right well this this actually seems to go with that line of question before we pause did you play video games and did that have an effect on your confidence in your decision to do this destruction for accuracy she said sh for shooting accuracy yeah okay and that's it it didn't embolden you to carry this out on living creatures she said you know of course it gives you confidence and it helps to you know because you, you when you're when you're playing video games um and eric goes again this isn't for everybody though but when no. she say when you're playing those video games you do feel like you're the hero or whatever because you get so many points and yeah. you get to do so many things i don't um, think you got very many points already on this one yeah well, she's talking in the video games, and so you I know, know, yeah, and so she's, <laughs> you know, she says on on some level though, she feels like it helped to de dehumanize de mm. hu humanize her is what yeah. she says. Yeah, dehumanize life. 
really. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. All right. Eric, do you agree with that about video games like Fortnite that you're. Eric says you yes. Just play he, all said, the time. he said yes. He said, you know, people are getting a thrill out of killing. And I would not let my kids play and, that. And, and, and Although that, I did, but I wouldn't if I had to do it all over again. Mm. And it kind of desensitizes you. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Denise, Eric, and Audrey. Stay tuned. I will push record again. You guys, I don't know when we're going to post part two. You don't want to miss it. So hit the notification bell. And remember, Denise Ramon at deniseramon.com. All right. Thank you, guys.